Hey everybody, hope you're doing well. Welcome back to another episode of CS News and a very special one at that because I want to talk about a potential market crash coming to CSGO this year sometime soon. And will we ever see one? We actually do not know. So first off, I do want to show you guys items on screen to prepare all of you for a potential market crash that we could see sometime soon in CSGO. And I want you all to know as of right now, these items in C inside CSGO are at the highest points they've ever been at. We're going to look at the Op Asimov first. You guys can see most of the items I'm going to show you, if not all of them, actually saw their dip during the last sale. So my, my evidence of this is our last sale was actually a winter steam sale back in December 22nd. Obviously yesterday was June 22nd and the summer sale has began and this is potentially where we could see a big drop in CSGO item prices. So first off, you already saw the Op Asimov. I'll also show you guys the AK Redline. Some also some more um, unfamiliar items out there. The Glock Fade, the M4 Asimov, as well as the Karambit. You can see with every single one of these items you guys can test this yourself. We also see with multiple items out there, actually a majority of the items out there, saw a big dip in our last sale, the winter sale, back in December 22nd. Now, ever since that date, we've seen prices skyrocket. The AK Redline, for instance, has gone up from around $4.50 back in December and then back into last summer as well, and now it's a staggering $7.20 on average, although I think it is a little bit down so far throughout this initial first few days of the Steam Summer Sale. So I want to warn all of you guys, I have no evidence really backing this up, but I do want to warn you that as of right now, many of you guys know CSGO item prices are as about as high as they've ever been if not at the highest they've ever been for most items out there. So just be aware of that. We could see a little price reduction for this Steam Summer Sale, which did start yesterday, and unfortunately enough, Steam's been acting up. I tried to buy games all yesterday. Steam was glitching the, almost the entire day. More of like a market correction, for, for lack of better terms. And also on top of that, some more CSGO news for all of you. We do have CSGO earnings coming out, revealing our top earning players so far, all time in the game of CSGO. Actually, very own SK Gaming's Fallen. He now ranks number one, followed closely by NBK. Kind of a surprise there, I guess, experience ranks all. The more years you play, the more money you make. He's followed out there in the top five by two of his teammates. And so three of the top five right now for top CSGO earners are all in SK Gaming. And then rounding out the top 15 players earnings making all time, we actually have two Astralis members and alongside that two current G2 members as well. And then all of Virtus Pro. So those are your top 15 CSGO earners in prize pool only. This actually does not include salaries. If we did include salaries, these players would probably not shift around too much. But Virtus Pro guys would definitely be up there probably a little bit higher. On top of that, we also got to see how many tournaments CSGO has had ever since it actually was you know, founded back in 2012, uh, founded, created, launched, whatever you guys want to say, just over five years ago, and we've already had nearly 2,400 tournaments, and yes, that ranks number one by far and away, followed by League of Legends. League of Legends established a lot longer ago. They only have 1,900 tournaments, so one of a really cool thing out there that yes, we know oversaturation is certainly a thing, and this just proves that. Just over five years, 2,400 tournaments. Think about that. That is at least one tournament a day for the last five years. That is insane to think about. And before we get into some North American news involving Cloud9 and TSM, I do want to thank all of you so much for using my OP Skins affiliate code. I know I've said this so much in the past week or so, but I've actually been pushing that code down in the description for all of you. It's free to use. And I cannot thank you all enough for the great response we had over the past week. I actually just checked my OP Skins affiliate code link, and we now have over 400 users who have used my code for free down below. So seriously, like from the bottom of my heart, that means so much to me, guys. That's the one way you can support me, and it's not a gambling sponsor. So seriously, thank you all so much for over 400 signups. That is an insane response. But also bouncing off that, it does seem more bad news for North American ways. TSM and Cloud9 apparently are going to lose their new sponsor, or their old sponsor, that is, Red Bull. Red Bull being one of those many energy drinks out there. Of course, we have NIP's NOCO in the scene, Monster trying to join the scene as well with other teams out there. But it does seem Red Bull will be leaving TSM and Cloud9 behind with some instances do the League of Legends teams. Apparently some tournament regulations over there don't abide by the rules uh, followed by that sponsor. So Red Bull will be withdrawing their sponsors from both TSM. TSM obviously not the best well-known CSGO lineup these past few months not having one, but Cloud9 certainly one of those better ones, especially when it comes publicity-wise for their players. Although neither TSM or Cloud9 win a lot of league tournaments or CSGO tournaments for that instance, their publicity and their well-knownness of their players is really what makes money for those sponsors. So that's very unfortunate for them. But although looking forward, guys, we can look forward to Cloud9 probably signing a sponsor sometime soon. Again, their player representation is probably one of the best in the North American scene, so we shouldn't be worried for them, although I am worried for their other teams going forward because Red Bull will be withdrawing, although it's League of Legends related, they'll be withdrawing their sponsor from the, the entire organization. So League of Legends, CSGO, their Smash Brothers players, and allegedly because of this, I know it's not CSGO related, two of the Smash Brothers players for these organizations have actually had their visas revoked because they're no longer sponsored by Red Bull, and that changes your work visa. So, a pretty bad instance here for this, but hopefully 
both these organizations do get it sorted out fast and sign some new sponsors shortly afterwards. And I guess the bad North American news does kind of continue. At the point of you guys watching this video, ECS finals are going on as we speak. The group stages will be going on today between these eight teams on screen. And again, time and time again, we're going to have a hard time splitting up between two groups, group A and B, especially when it only comes down to eight teams. It's very hard to make these groups evenly split up as Mixwell did tweet out this. And why he actually did that yesterday is because as of right now, group stages, we have group A right now on screen between Phase SK, G2, and yes, Optic is your lone survivor there. The one team I really cannot predict to go through this group, they are going to have a rough time competing with these three teams. Just to give you guys some background in this, FaZe Clan in the last two months have been obviously one of your top five teams in the world. They're coming off a second place at IEM Sydney. I believe that second place was to SK Gaming. SK also in this group. They won DreamHack Summer just last weekend, as well as G2 a couple or three weekends ago. They won ESL Pro League Finals. And then there's Optic, who has really not done nothing outside of North America. They also lost Jason R, their potential IGL, and they have Hayes, their step-down coach. He was their coach. Now he's their IGL. So Optic is definitely your heavy underdog team, but they could in the best of one, all these best of ones going on. They could upset somebody, but definitely not your favorite team going forward. Group B, a little bit more evenly split up here, guys. We do have Cloud9, Astralis, Liquid, and Fnatic for Group B. So best of luck to those teams who try and go through to playoffs. Now speaking off of Liquid, though, Liquid did just launch on their YouTube page a new documentary. I love watching Optic Gaming. Their, their actual Optic Nation games, they actually play together as a team. You really get to see the background of those teams, so I'll always promote this kind of stuff. I will link that Team Liquid documentary down below in the description if you guys are Liquid fans or North American fans, want to see more behind the scenes and some special footage about them, I'll link that down below for all of you. But best of luck to Optic in, in this whole ECS Finals thing. And very last in today's episode of CSK News, I'll try and make this very fast because today's episode is getting kind of long. We do have one roster change I want to talk about. That is Devil going to LDLC. He's returning to LDLC to join up with the Existence over there. Going to be cool to see what he can do with that lineup as he will be replacing Mistu. Now, kind of a weird change here because Devil's been playing for some other French teams out there. He's actually played for three teams, I believe, in about the last eight months. He was going to try and make his own team and then it became Queen Consolidated. He was pulling teams or pulling members from other French squads who had disbanded and again, again he actually came together as Queen Consolidated. That time did not last very long. He's actually been playing for the last four to six months with a team. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going to butcher this actual pronunciation here. He's been playing for team. I'm going to call him Maxi Sauce, but it's probably, you know, pronounced Maxi Sauce or something. Uh, oh, that was stupid. But I'm very curious how this actually does because we had Devil, you know, in just last year he was actually coaching then he came back as a player. One of those French players has been bouncing all around the place, but again, his experience cannot be underwhelmed here. So hopefully, we're going to actually see what he can really do on LDLC. And we'll help, hopefully, that does turn out for them. Obviously, the third or fourth place French team in the world right now, following G2 and then Envious. Obviously, a big gap between G2 and every other French team out there as of right now. But best of luck to Devil in his new time with LDLC. As always, hope you guys all enjoyed this episode of CSGO News. If you guys did, please leave a like. More importantly, though, leave a comment so I can actually reply to you guys and interact with all of you. With all of you people in the comment section like I usually try to do. As always, live, love, laugh, lot. Remind me to shake my mind like you. Special videos coming out this weekend, guys. It's going to be really cool to see how you guys react to that. I'm going to take the weekend off. I will show you guys a special video tomorrow, and then I will have a gambling video out Sunday, my only sponsored video for the entire month. So thank you all so much for watching. Hope you guys can support those videos, and let me know what you guys think. I will see you all Monday. Goodbye. <laughs>